Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to r slash Entitled People, where people truly believe that they can do what they want, when they want, because they're better than you. And in this episode, guys, nothing is more entitled than people destroying other people's things and not caring about it. It's ridiculous. Guys, it's going to be a wild ride. I hope you enjoy the stories. Don't shake your heads too hard. And as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here. Let's dive in. Okay, so this is one of those crazy stories that I thought would never happen to me. One day, I had to go do some work at the city hall, and on my way back to the office, I stopped my car in a parking lot, in front of a store, to answer a call. I was inside of my car, on the phone, when a Karen arrives with her car, and she squeezes right next to me, like really close to me. Looking over, I can tell she's pretty close but I'm willing to give her the benefit of the doubt until I hear and feel not one, but two huge bangs on my car doors. The first one was from her swinging open her car door to get out. And before I can say anything, a second loud bang happens from her opening her rear door to get her kid out of the back seats. She doesn't notice me sitting inside my car as my windows are tinted, so she gets her kid and she starts to walk off towards the store. Of course, I stop the call, get out of my car, and I tell her, I basically say, um, hey, excuse me ma'am, you just damaged my car doors. To which she replies, oh, sorry, I have a kid, these things aren't easy, you know. She then turns around and continues walking. That's when I say to her, well, I'm sorry too, but it's damaged to my car and you must take responsibility. The Karen then says, nope. She then turns her back on me again and she goes inside the store. The kid runs after her. So I lock my car door and I go after her and I say, excuse me, you can't just damage someone's car and then walk away. I was sitting inside my car when it happened. Karen then says to me, listen, I have a child. These things happen. It's not a big deal. She then walks back to my car door, looks at it, and she says, it's just a little scratch. Stop crying. Now, to be honest, if she was humble and she admitted her mistake like a grown woman and maybe apologized, I could have maybe accepted, maybe. But the dents on my door were pretty noticeable and she was a bitch. So I say to her, listen, I know you're dealing with children and it can be hard. However, you still need to accept responsibility for damaging someone's property. At that, she loses it. She screams at me saying, look, I'm a mom, look at my car. I have so many little scratches and dents on my car, and I don't go after people and try to get money out of them. I say to her, that's not my problem. My insurance doesn't cover mommy damages. She then says to me, stop screaming, you're scaring my child. Now, her kid was a bit confused, but not really scared. And also, I wasn't screaming, she was. So I say to her, listen, I work hard to get my things, and I don't want my car to be damaged. What you do with your property, it's on you. Mine, it's on me. Let's exchange insurance information and not make a big deal out of this. Hearing me mention insurance, she starts screaming how I don't understand how hard it was having kids. And I could easily pay the damage myself as I probably have no family. I try to reason with her and she just grabs her kid and she puts them in the car and ends up driving off. I know several moms that would never have this behavior, so yeah, she was the crazy one. I ended up getting her license plate and going to the police, so the moral of the story is, make sure your insurance covers mommy damages. Oh man, I would be fuming if I was OP guys. Like, not once, but twice she hits his car. And not even by accident. Like, it wasn't her trying to squeeze her way out of a tight spot. She just throws her door open, not caring about damaging other people's doors. That's such an a-hole move. And really, using her kid as an excuse to be able to do those things is just so sad. Like, you know lots of other people have kids too, right Karen? And they go their whole lives without smacking their car doors into other vehicles. Like, that is just absurd. So I worked as a front desk supervisor for a hotel for three years. And I can tell you, entitled hockey parents were some of the worst people ever to deal with. The worst team to visit was from California. They were affluent, cocky, and inconsiderate. The whole week, there were arguments with staff of color and other hockey parents, and we were glad we quarantined them to the top floor, the eighth floor, away from other teams. 
The last night of the tournament lined up with a big fight on pay-per-view, and the hockey parents were slowly filtering back from a sports bar down the road. I was on the late shift this time, with the head of security, who we'll call Don. We were laughing because it was almost peaceful. Around 11pm, we get a call from a frantic guest, saying their bathroom light was raining. I sent engineering up to the 5th floor, and a few moments later, he calls down on the radio that he needs Don, and the other two engineers immediately. That's when the kitchen manager radioed, saying a part of the ceiling collapsed and water had flooded into the kitchen. Another call rang out from housekeeping, saying the same thing happened in the laundry room and break room adjacent to the kitchen. All the flooding reports were from the same wing of the building, and we just renovated rooms on that side. We were concerned that something happened to a water pipe somewhere during construction, but the head engineer wouldn't be back until morning. That's when we get another call. This time was from a businessman on the 8th floor, saying that water was rushing into his room from the hallway, and Don heads up there. Don comes back down about 30 minutes later, and he's furious. He's soaked up to his shins. One of the California hockey parents got wasted, and then decided he wanted a bath. He then plugged up the tub, and then turned the nozzle on high. The guy then went to sit on the couch, and he fell asleep with the water still on. Based on the timeline talking with other parents and his son, who left the room when dad came back drunk, the tub had most likely been running for hours. The dad was still plastered, and Don left him up there in the care of a fellow hockey parent, so he could decide what to do with the GM. I gave the rundown to the overnight staff, and told them that I would be back in the morning to relieve them. It was one of those few times that I was glad to have back-to-back shifts, because I could see how the whole story played out. The next morning, the GM and the head engineer were still racking up the cost the damages, but it was easily over $10,000. In addition to his own room, he damaged recently renovated rooms on floors 8 through 4, and once it got to the third floor, it followed the wiring and pipes through the walls, down to the kitchen, laundry room, break rooms, where it then busted through the ceiling. Now, the thing is, there are safeguards in hotels to deal with the occasional overflowing tub or toilet, but the volume from the constantly running tub was enough to overpower the system. It was up to me to get a copy of the dad's ID and get the GM when he arrived. The guy comes down two hours after checkout time. His hair was well done, and he was wearing a Rolex that I'm pretty sure was my annual salary. I then signal my front desker to get back up while I talk with the dad. When I asked for his ID, oh man, he got ugly. He then screams at me saying, there's no reason you need my ID. Why? What for? I say to him, uh, I'm afraid there is, sir. I've been instructed to get a copy for our records as there was some significant damage during your stay. At that, the guy leans in, laughs smugly at me and says, Look, lady, if your crap hole little hotel can't withstand a little water, that's not my problem. I build hotels in California, ones that make this place look like a drug house. And I know for a fact that hotels are supposed to have systems to prevent flooding. Where was yours? The guy was just screaming at me every sentence, blowing hot whiskey breath all over me. I say to him, yes sir, they do, but in this case, you happen to... He then screams at me saying, I happen to? Excuse me? I know you're only doing this because I make more money in a minute than you'll see your entire damn life. You think you can suck money out of me? I'm telling you right now, you don't want to go down this road with me. He said that while giving me a cocky smirk. I just smiled politely, reiterated that he needed to hand over his ID, and then the GM comes whipping around the corner. He relieved me to go on break, but I heard the GM say, I'm trying to handle this civilly. If you want to make this difficult, I'm sure the police would be thrilled to accommodate you. I know they filed a claim with insurance, but I don't know much of what happened after that. I hope he paid for every penny. Oh, me too, OP. And by the sounds of it, it's definitely way more than $10,000 worth of damages. Especially since it's water damage. Like, holy, what an idiot. And I can't believe he argued with OP. Like, I just ran the water for a few hours while I passed out. What's the big deal? It only destroyed, like, four floors. Guys, I am still in shock that he passed out and let the water run for hours, and then have the nerve to blame it on the hotel. And then on top of that, basically throw his money in Opie's face, and then say they're not getting a dime from him. Aren't rich, entitled people the worst? So here's a little backstory. 
I play racquetball. For those who don't know what it is, it's more or less like squash, but with a way more big and bouncy ball, and also different racket styles. After years of practicing and playing, my trainer told me that he thought I was good enough and that I should enter a tournament. The winners would be getting a trip to play in the state tournament, and if I won that, I would also get a trip to the national tournament. So I did it. Nothing to lose, right? This happened during the quarterfinals of the state tournament. I managed to make it that far. However, when it was around 5 minutes before my next match against my next opponent, I feel someone tap on my shoulder, and here he is. It's a huge man, just staring at me with a sort of a fake smile and a natural glare in his eyes. The dialogue was something like this. The guy says to me, hi. I say to him, uh, hello. He then says to me, so you do play good boy, I was watching you. I just reply, thanks. And then he says to me, you know, the boy you're about to face next is my son. And he's been practicing this for years. He's really good. At this point, I thought it was just an attempt to be a good sport. So I say, well, me too. I suppose it's going to be a really good match then. The guy says, yeah, sure, about that. Uh, I was actually wondering if you could just, you know, quit. Hearing that, I'm shocked. I say to him, quit? He then says to me, yeah, I mean, listen, my son would really love to make it to the finals. And you would actually be doing yourself a favor since I know my son would wreck you if you face each other. So save yourself the embarrassment, kid. Hearing him say that, I was actually pissed with his attitude, but I kept it cordial. I say to him, uh, no, I don't think I will quit, sir. I'd like to play against your son. If he's as good as you say he is, I'm up for the challenge. The guy was about to say something else, but he stopped his sentence, and he just walks away, looking like he was in a really bad mood, and I swear, if looks could kill, I might have fallen over dead. So the game starts, and it was a really good game. We were actually really evenly matched, however, I was winning by a bit. A few minutes later into the game, a horn starts to blare. That means something has happened, and the game needs to be stopped. It appears that the game that was on our side also to decide the semi-finalist, one of the contestants fell and he got a really bad lesion so he wasn't able to play and he needs to get to the hospital. I left the court to see what was going on and I left my racket behind which was a huge mistake. So while everyone was distracted, the dad saw a chance to sabotage me so his son could win. So he enters the room and he destroys my racket. Fortunately, this wasn't unnoticed as my trainer was around. I came back just in time to hear my trainer scream, Hey, what the F are you doing to that racket? The dad says, uh, nothing. And this actually shocked me because he lied. He then goes on and says, Oh, well, I was just assuring that nothing would happen to these rackets, but when I got here, it was like this. My trainer says to him, I just saw you breaking the cords. The referee then comes in and says, Sir, I'm sorry, but due to your behavior, your son can't play in the tournament anymore. The dad tries to argue and says, This isn't fair, I didn't do anything. My trainer argues him and says, Sir, I just watched you break the cords on his racket. Suddenly, you can see the dad's face change, and the ref says, Okay, sir, since we have witnesses to what you just did, as I've said, I'm afraid your son will be disqualified. I just hear the kid scream, are you serious? Thanks for not trusting in me, dad. Even if I couldn't win, just let me lose. If my opponent is better, they deserve to win. What part of that don't you get? The dad just says, oh, come on. I was trying to help you. I'm sure you could have won anyways. That's when I chime in and say, then why did you sabotage me instead of trusting him? At this very moment, a mix of rage and embarrassment was shown on the dad's face. He then screams at me and says, this doesn't concern you. Also, don't be that confident. You don't have a racket, so you can't play anymore. His son then says, No, Dad, this does concern him since you broke his racket. And yes, he does have a racket. At this point, I was actually surprised since the kid grabs his own racket, which was way newer than mine and more expensive as well, and he gave it to me. He then said to me, please, take this as an apology for my dad's behavior. I hope you win the tournament. The dad just screams, don't give him that racket. I bought that for you. The kid just says, well, we owe him a new racket, so... At this moment, security arrives and escorts the dad away with his son. The dad was enraged at this moment because his son was on my side. I just felt bad for the kid for having to deal with his dad. What happened next is that I got myself into the finals, but I ended up losing against someone who was way better than me, so he was a much better player than I was. You know what, reading this guys, I can't help but to feel bad for the kid. Like it's gotta suck living with a parent like that. 
Someone who always wants you to win, to the point that they'll sabotage others to help you win when they don't even think you're good enough. And I will admit guys, I've got a lot of respect for that kid, for giving OP his racket in the end. And hopefully, the dad learns to just let his kid lose after that. Like yeah, as a parent, you always want your kid to win, I get it. But losing is just as important because a lot of the times, the losses are what drive someone to become better. I'm a 24 year old female and I previously posted about one of my mother's younger friends, a Karen, in her early 40s, who I first knew as carefree and wonderful until she had her first kid. That child ended up being a complete brat with her mother's encouragement. But soon, Karen had another child, a son, 4 years old, who I did kind of like because he wasn't as intense as his older sibling. As of last night, that's changed though. For some context, my mother's greatest joy in life, other than her kids, is antiquing. She dresses every room in her house very carefully, and she'll often stop at every vintage shop around to find a piece of furniture, sometimes using road trips to find new antique stores and examining what's inside of them. I used to hate going with my mom to these stores, but since she took all three of us kids and told us that these used to belong to other people, I think it gave us an early respect for other people's things. We were never the kids to break stuff or jump on furniture, in our homes or anyone else's, and I'm pretty sure that contributed to it. When my mom was pregnant with my oldest sibling in 1990, she found a small circular wooden table with three curved legs topped with a circle made of marble. The shop owner told her it was 70 years old, so she bought it, shined it up, and stuck it in her living room, where it became a staple of our house. The coffee table lasted her through three kids' college graduations, a move in 2000, and countless family parties and events, still shiny and looking new and gorgeous. It's as much a part of the family now as any of us kids. Now, to last night. Karen's birthday recently occurred, so since she had given mom a birthday celebration, mom decides to return the favor inviting Karen, her husband, and their kids to our house for lobster. I'm not a fan of this. Whenever Karen and her kids come over, my mom makes a serious effort to give the kids something fun to do while the adults talk. We have a collection of coloring books, blocks, Legos, dolls, puzzles, action figures, and a TV in the basement from when my siblings and I were growing up. Mom even brought them some new toys herself, but inevitably, the kids will play down there for like two minutes and then come up to their mom to complain that they're bored, and then proceed to wreak havoc on our house. My parents have warned the kids many times to not jump on things, but they do not listen. The oldest kid is also very combative and likes to pull hair and hit people, as I learned firsthand. One time, he broke a holiday decoration given to my dad by his late mother. Of course, Karen coddles her kids and coos that they're the best in the world and all that BS. I've told my mom repeatedly that I don't want to be around the kids or their parents, but she brushes it off. In fact, she likes to tease me for not interacting with Karen and not coming downstairs when they're visiting. And she says that Karen should not get in the way of me living my life. I live with my folks, and I'm invited to attend the party, but I make my usual choice of opting out. Since I've just finished the first week of a new job, I intend to celebrate with a day at the bookstore and a night with friends. But yesterday morning, as I was preparing to leave, mom asked me why I was going to leave her to deal with the two kids by herself. I told her that I wasn't going to let them get in the way of me living my life. She just laughed, and she wished me a good day, and I left. My day was wonderful. I spent the morning and early afternoon at my favorite bookstore, and then the evening with my friends at a wine bar and the night with them at a karaoke room. I come home around 11.30 that night, where my parents are asleep on the couch watching TV. So I wake them up, tell them about the day, and they seem genuinely happy it went so well. To be polite, I ask how the party went. My folks then got quiet, and then they look at each other, and my mother, sounding very drained, tells me to go into the living room, the next room over. Confused, I look through the doorway and I immediately see why. The beautiful table, now a century old, is broken. The three curved wooden legs were bisected and splintered. And there's a crack in the marble top and a collection of wood shards littering the carpet. I asked them what happened. So earlier in the day, around 6.30pm, my dad and Karen's husband went to pick up my grandpa, plus a steamer for the lobster. While they're away, mom had worked to settle the kids in the basement and reminded them to not jump on anything, and then gone to converse with Karen. As they're talking, my mom leaves to go to the restroom at the other end of the house. She stops in the kitchen before returning and she hears a crash in the living room. 
Mom runs in, and lo and behold, Karen's son had become bored, come upstairs to the living room, and started jumping on all the furniture, including the ancient table. And that's when it broke. And this all happened while Karen was watching. My mother is predictably horrified, and she stares as Karen examines her son for injuries, and reassures mom that the kid is fine. My mom gets sick to her stomach, seeing her table broken. She then takes the son aside, and she tells him in a serious but not yelling voice that auntie is very disappointed in him, and that he knows the rules at her house. Karen overhears this, and she berates mom, telling her that she's the only one who can speak that way to her kids before coddling her son and telling him that it's gonna be okay, that broken objects are less important than broken bones, and he'll be fine. That's when mom asked Karen if she herself told the kids to not jump on the furniture at our house. Karen replies casually, no, I didn't tell them not to, why would I? The husbands then return, and all three men are shocked. Karen's husband immediately offers to pay a carpenter to fix the table, which my mom accepts. Dinner goes on, but it's cold and impersonal between mom and Karen. This morning, Karen, son, and the husband came by our house to give mom a bouquet of flowers, and also an apology and the number of a carpenter who they'll pay for. Mom puts on a smile and she says thank you, but she's still very upset nonetheless. Even though the table's gonna be fixed, it'll never be the same. My dad doesn't want the kid in our house until he's older. Mom says she'll be keeping her distance from Karen for the time being, since she can't teach her kids to respect other people's property or discipline them properly. My heart breaks for my mom. I don't plan on having kids anytime soon, but if I do one day have kids, I'll make sure to teach them at an early age to respect other people and their things. Guys, I'm so heartbroken for OP's mom. Because you know, even if that table does get restored, it'll never be the same again. Like a hundred year old antique table destroyed, all because a Karen let her kid jump on a table. Like who in their right mind lets a kid jump on top of a table? Like couches I understand, because couches are bouncy and fun, but tables? Really? She does know her child could have gotten badly hurt, right? And guys, it makes it so much worse that Karen's like, oh, my kid destroyed your century-old table? Well, you know what they say, broken objects don't compare to broken bones. Or whatever mumbo-jumbo she said to try to soften the blow. Absolutely ridiculous, Karen. OP's mom should call friends off at that point. My sister, who's 28 years old, and her husband, came home to my parents and I for the holidays. Her kids are 8 and 6. A couple of nights before Thanksgiving, my sister went to a concert with her husband, and she left the kids with my parents. Well, my parents decide that they want to go to a dinner party, and they left in the evening, and they left the kids there with me. Now, I was not asked to watch the kids. I hate kids. They just told me that they were going out, and they left them in the living room. My sister's kids are at this age where they can be loud and hyperactive together. You can't just put a movie on for a time and leave them. I'm in my last year of school, and I actually didn't go hang out with some friends so I could study. So when I noticed this, I just left them alone. I went to my room to study and locked the door. I heard a lot of banging, screaming, and ruckus, and I checked on them to be sure they weren't injuring themselves, but I let them do as they please because I wasn't asked to watch them. They ended up causing quite a bit of damage. They broke the TV by throwing stuff at it, and they got into my mom's oil paints and smeared them everywhere. Oil paint was on the curtains, walls, sofa, rugs, ceiling, everywhere. They also had thrown dog food everywhere. Water and juice was spilled in the kitchen. It was a wreck. Honestly, I just laughed. However, get this. My mom expects me to pay for damages. My mom said I was an a-hole for not just studying downstairs and watching the kids. I told her it was not my responsibility to watch them. I told her that she should ask my sister for the money because they're her kids. My whole family's been fighting about this for several days. So am I the a-hole here? Guys, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Let me know your thoughts and comment down below. Do you think OP's the a-hole? Is OP's sister the a-hole? Are the parents the a-hole for leaving? I personally think everybody sucks here because one, the sister should be raising kids who behave better at someone else's house. Two, the parents should have totally asked OP before leaving for a dinner party when they agreed to watch the kids. And three, OP does suck a little for being that petty and letting the damage get that bad. That's a little bit over the top. But as she said, she wasn't asked to watch the kids. But also she still does live at home, so it's her house too. 
And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's an r slash petty revenge. I haven't done that in a while, guys. Where OP's psycho boss demands her husband, guys, and tries to get OP fired over it. It's such a ridiculous story, so go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.